so for right now everybody like when you're thinking about uh, artificial intelligence if you just think about connecting that to any kind of uh, fashion and actually well-known uh, kind of science and application that we are using at the moment just a kind of making it a, a kind of a science fiction and making it a kind of a smart thing right now every everybody talking about the smart stuff smart thing like whenever it, you know the vision making you know smart vision like a television making a smart television and right now when you try to combine the, the artificial intelligence with any of any kind of activity that we do in a campus and we do in a actually the the, the, the normal uh, life uh, we do every day like to making everything more uh, fascinating making everything more fun and at the same time making it more professional and technical in a science point of view in a kind of, in a way that we are using that in the campus by using artificial intelligence we can go based on a very preliminary uh, information that we can see from the patient and we can hear from the patient we can go to, right to the point if mri is, is the most important thing that we can diagnose only based on that we just do the mri if the ECG is the only important part, so we just do the ECG. And even beside that, the period of those measurements is important. So the type of measurement is important. We are going to do MRI, we are going to do ECG, we are going to do uh, EEG. And even if we decide, okay, the EEG is important, how long we are we need that EEG to be recorded? How long we need that MRI, fMRI to be recorded? How long we need the heart rate to be monitored? And that period of time, that cost a lot of time and money for both, again, healthcare system and a patient but using the artificial intelligence we just record and, and also real-time monitoring and we just uh, record the portion the most important portion of the data so we don't need to monitor the patient for 24 hours we just monitor so for example even for, for, for implantable devices that you mentioned uh, specifically so what happens today is that the, the, the implantable devices for monitoring collect the data and those are thought to be stored in the, in the device and those data has to be transferred to the, to the physician or healthcare uh, uh, center to be processed later. And even with having that device and planning the body, still there are a lot of a force, a lot of other process that has to be done by other people. And that's make it difficult and make it time consuming and actually actually brings a lot of cost for both the patient and the healthcare system. But if you can imagine, if you have the implantable devices actually occupied and uh, with built-in artificial intelligence inside it, that implantable devices can act as independent diagnoser for us, can act as an independent device that can do everything for us without the help of any other person or without actually uh, uh, doing any other extra process. So uh, like, I. I believe there are maybe two types of interest in this field. So one is in a te technique and technology. It means so the nature of AI. Some people are trying to and are interested to learn artificial intelligence. And some people are trying to learn the application and actually implement the application. Like having these two at the same time is going to be a quite different. So what I propose and what I suggest for the people who are interested working on, on this area is that first of all, they have to decide which one they have more experience, which one they have more interest, to more focus on a technology side or more focus on application. But one of the main benefits of using light for both diagnostics and treatment uh, is that it is one of the main technologies that can be used for long term with no side effect comparing to the other electromagnet, actually electrical or magnetic devices that are available that the, the people can't uh, use for long-term monitoring and real-time monitoring. Because if you want to do the real-time monitoring, one of the main things, that main challenges is to having no effect, no side effect for the patients. But using these optical devices, uh, and we are able to do the real-time, long-term and continuous monitoring of the, the, the patient for now. And also in a processing side, what I have been doing for um, actually processing the information that we can get from these wearable and implantable devices and even optical the technique that we are using, how we have to process this data. And I have been using the artificial, artificial intelligence to process these data that we are collecting using these devices and these technologies. And then 
uh, make decision making based on those information. It means that we can diagnose the um, uh, right time and actually in a, in a very efficient uh, way.